Shark versus Revlon. Yep, we're gonna do this. Shark literally took the One Step Styler brush head and put it on top of their engine. Is it better? That's what we're gonna find out. Let's do it together. So you might be thinking, why am I comparing one to one? I mean, they're literally almost identical. The only thing that's somewhat different are the tips from the Revlon brush head to the Shark. The Shark doesn't have the little tips attached. It's just very prickly, but even the air vents are cut out the exact same. They're both dual bristles. You have the bore and then the ni nylon bristles. I'm curious to see what we'll get. This is the Revlon 2.0, and the 2.0 has the extra heat setting, which is a medium. And if you're wondering, yes, the Revlon does come off as well. <laughs> Let's go for it. Let's start with Shark. Obviously, this has a lot more sophisticated technology in regards to temperature control, because you can also control the airflow, but keep the highest heat setting or go with the lowest heat setting and go with the highest airflow. Let's go for it. Highest airflow, highest heat setting. Yeah, these are not my favorite for my hair length. I just find that it really puts too much tension on my hair and my scalp and my hair is already pretty fragile to begin with. So I am not the biggest fan of these brush heads or one step stylers anymore. I like them on shorter hair. I enjoyed that. Revlon, I'm going to use the highest setting, which is the highest airflow and the highest temp. This one's a little softer, more gentle on the hair. I think the little tips on the Revlon is making it a little bit more of a gentle experience versus the Shark. It's a little bit easier and not as painful. Just try. Let's keep going. This is loud. Not as loud. <laughs> and it has more of a, a bass instead of a high pitch. <laughs> I think this one is a little bit hotter. This one is so much easier to control and hold. This one is just, the body is way too long and it's wobbly because of this 90 degree option. I think because I'm spending more time on the shark, I'm getting a slightly better result. Look at towards the bottom. It's not as frizzy. So you were saying that the Revlon is hotter? The it's Revlon hotter. feels hotter and it's not putting as much tension on my hair. Um, what about airflow? I think this one has a slight edge with higher airflow, but I think there, it's just, I think it's so loud. Just looking at the bristles. Yeah, the bristles look very um, messed up already on the shark. A lot of bending happening. <laughs> Let's continue. That is hot. Your fingers, literally. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Wow, that's warm.
my hand is getting cramped. Oh man. All right, they're extremely similar. The results are almost identical. They're both smooth, they're both shiny. There's a little bit of a bend happening. I didn't try too hard to create a wave or anything. I just wanted to give more of a blowout. I'm not seeing more frizz on either side. Identical, if I'm gonna be honest. Now the experience, this is where it differs from one brand to the other. Let's start with Shark. The biggest complaint I had with them was the controls, the settings towards the bottom, especially if you're using it for the barrel portion to curl or wave your hair. It's very inconvenient. It's honestly frustrating and doesn't make the experience as enjoyable as the Dyson. But if you're using the round brush or the oval brush is what they call it, it's such a long body. You have to bring your hand all the way up to the top where the 90 degree angle begins. And Honestly, holding it right here, it's a little bit more even. It's not as top heavy when you hold it down here. So I now understand why they have the settings down here for the oval brush. Like I said in the beginning, this one had a lot more tension on the hair. It's the same dual bristles, except it doesn't have the little caps. They're bore and nylon bristles. Same with the Revlon. The one thing I will say, I actually think the Revlon, I like the little bigger option, the little nozzle at the top to kind of help rotate. I I think it was a little bit easier to control that way and you had more control. So let's quickly talk about the airflow and the heat. How do they compare? So starting with the Shark, the airflow we notice is concentrated more at the top and then when you, you barely feel it on the sides in the middle or towards the bottom. So the airflow is very inconsistent and I think that's why it doesn't feel as hot. In comparison to the Revlon, I've always had from the very beginning with the original tool, the airflow is also very inconsistent, but at least the airflow is a little bit concentrated more towards the center and not towards the top or towards the bottom, which I think makes it a little bit easier to control where you're wrapping the hair around. There's not as much airflow coming out of the Revlon, but I think there's a little bit more heat coming out. And I think that was the biggest issue with Revlon, even with the original. It's just so hot on the highest heat setting. And I think that's why Revlon did add the medium heat setting. But when you go down to the medium, you also lose the airflow. Shark, that's where it wins. You can have the highest airflow with a medium heat setting, low heat setting, or the highest heat setting, or you can do the opposite, the lowest airflow with the highest heat setting. So you have a lot more versatility, you have a lot more control with the airflow and the heat versus the Revlon. The next bonus, you can take the attachment off and you have four other attachments that you can now purchase separately for $29.99 each. And I think that's great. But you can't purchase this separately. You have to buy either the 249 package or the 269 package, which is still roughly around $300 with tax and shipping versus the Revlon is $59.99. The negative, yes, it dis the attachment, you can take it off, the brush head, but you can't buy any other attachments separately. Which is weird. Which is weird, yeah. <laughs> kind of leaves you scratching your head why they created this option. And it's been at least um, a year, a year and a half, almost two years that this tool has been available. So I'm not sure what they're planning, but I mean, there are rumors, you know, they filed for bankruptcy Revlon, I don't know. I'm just looking now, which one pulled more hair? It looks like the shark did. Because it's removable, my hair got stuck right in here in the crevice and in the 90 degree crevice. But I just thought I'd mention that there's a lot more crevices for your hair to get stuck versus the Revlon, my hair didn't get stuck in the crevices, which I'm actually pretty impressed with. The shark was a little bit more awkward to use because of the long body. I mean, look at the difference. 
and in the body it's a lot thicker and wider versus the Revlon the 2.0 they actually made this a little bit more slim so it would be a little bit more easier to hold and that was another big issue with the original that a lot of people complained it was bulky and it was starting to cramp their hands just like the shark is doing or was doing so it's a lot thicker of a body versus the Revlon it's a little bit more stability and more control with the body we talked about the shark tool just kind of myself and Andre to each other shark what they did was they were smart about it they basically took all the best selling hair tools and created attachments <laughs> from those hair tools. The Dyson, the biggest hair tool or attachment that they offer are the barrels. I think that's what people are so excited about, the Kwanda technology, and that's what Shark has offered. They haven't re-engineered the, the technology. They haven't added any kind of bonus to it. And same goes for the Revlon One Step Styler. This thing is a hot seller. This one in particular, 2.0, won the Allure Beauty Award, which is fascinating. So they took the brush head <laughs> um, attachment, One Step Styler, and added it to their package. But then again, you're comparing if you're just wanting the one step styler and you don't care about the barrels, you're still gonna have to fork out 250 US dollars for this right here versus this. So Shark 250 versus uh, Revlon $60. Like I said, positives, the heat controls. I feel a little bit more confident and safer with this tool, with the Shark versus the Revlon. And I think that's why I don't really talk about the Revlon anymore because I don't use it anymore. I use the Dyson because of the safer technology for my hair, knowing that it's not going to burn my hair off like the Revlon, you know, there is just so hot, but it's good. It does what it's supposed to do. And like I said, it's a little bit more gentle. It doesn't put as much tension on my hair, which I appreciate versus the Shark. If you're wondering why I didn't compare the Shark to the original Revlon is because the Revlon, the original one is a lot bigger. So I didn't think it was gonna be as fair versus the new or the improved Revlon 2.0. And they're extremely similar in diameter, which is roughly around 2.5 inches wide. So overall, in our opinion, Andre's and mine, we think the future is brighter for Shark just because <laughs> they were the ones that thought of combining all the best attachments for the hair, Dyson, Revlon, et cetera, and putting them into one package and creating a great engine for this. I think this is what matters the most, the whole body, the technology right here. The only thing we're docking them is for ingenuity, for the attachments. They're not new, they're not re-engineered, it's just they're taking the best technology and combining it into one package, which I think is great. <laughs> Why not, right? So I do want to make clear that Dyson was the only hair tool brand that did invest and spend millions of dollars innovating technology, the Kawanda technology, the barrels, all of that, for brands like this to follow their lead and offer something more affordable for the consumers. So I think if you're going to invest in a hair tool or hair styling uh, drying system, definitely check out Shark. We're both excited for what the future uh, is going to bring, what maybe else they're going to offer in the future, what other brush heads, what other technology. It's exciting. All right, I'm gonna end the video here. Thank you for watching, spending time with us. And we'll see you in the next one very soon. Bye.